Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought I would do a what's on my iPhone because I've been loving watching these videos on YouTube and I think it's a really great way to see how other people organize their phones for self-care, functionality, aesthetics, whatever it might be because that is exactly what I'm all about here on this channel. I really love being super organized and really optimizing everything that I use in my daily life for productivity and also a beautiful aesthetic that's just gonna make me feel like my phone is serving more of a purpose than just jumping on to answer a message or for social media. So I'm gonna show you through how I've organized absolutely everything and how I make the most out of using my phone as a really important tool in my everyday life. So just a super quick reminder, if you are new here, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I put up new videos every single week. Now I'll show you what kind of phone I have. It's nothing that new, but I do have the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So this was the one where they first upgraded the cameras, which is really amazing because you can get some beautiful photos on here now. And on my case, I just went for a solid colored case because I think I got the green phone and I wasn't really a huge fan of the color after a while. So I wanted to cover that up. And also my work bag is black and had a black lining. And when your phone is off and the screen is black, I was constantly losing it in the bottom of my handbags and it was giving me the worst anxiety. So I decided to opt for a really light colored case. So this is the 11 Pro Max, which is the biggest size you could get. And I really wanted that for obviously having a larger screen because I do do a lot of social media and things on my phone and I just wanted to have the largest working space possible. So I'll start the screen recording and I can pop it over here and show you everything that I have on my phone and how I've organized it. So when you first jump into my phone, I have done a bunch of widgets and if you've never used these before, they are game changers and I highly recommend you look into adding all of the widgets from your favorite apps and really customizing this home screen because this helps me at a glance see so so many things and really organize exactly what I like to have on my phone so the first thing that I have is a little weather one and this weather widget shows today and the two days ahead which is really great for me because particularly now we're in lockdown I'm always organizing to go for walks with my friends so Melbourne weather is the biggest joke and it can really be described as having four seasons in one day so it's really great that I can quickly click on this and check what the weather is doing and rely on that a little bit more for how I'm going to dress and if I'm able to go outside. The next one I have next to that is my Pinterest one. And if you love Pinterest, I will link mine down below and you can see all of the different boards that I have on there. But basically this is a scrolling image which changes every single hour. And that focuses on my um, vision board images, which I absolutely love because it means that I almost have like a portable vision board for whenever I don't have it on me. And I think this is really beautiful. And like I said, it just adds a little bit of a aesthetic element to the phone. The next thing down that I have is my calendar. And obviously this is really important for setting appointments and knowing what day of the week it is and the date as well, if you're ever filling out forms and things and you just quickly want to know that. And it also has the clock and my percentage of battery that's left. So I really love this widget. It's all in a neutral black and white kind of color, which is something that I really, really love, particularly being an architect. Everything that I do is always in black and white. So I really like this one. And I like that it was kind of the long format widget as well, because I feel like it helps me see a little bit more and be much more on top of what I'm doing for the week. The next one down I have is my daily horoscope. And this one's just a little bit of fun. I never take these things too seriously, but I'm a Leo, my birthday was in August and you can get widgets like this to customize it for your star sign. And I just think it's a little bit of fun because I do often think I am a lot of the traits of Leo. So it's nice to just get these little reminders and quotes and just check back in with that as well. The one next to this is one of my favorite things on this screen as well. And that is a daily inspirational quote. So I really like these. They're motivational and inspiring and spiritual and all sorts of things like that. So I just found an app where I can pick all of the different things that I'm interested in, whether it be self-development or spirituality and add it onto here. And it gives me a daily quote that will change every single day and rotate through to give me a little bit of inspiration. 
The next one down, you can see I was just listening to Georgie Stevenson's Rise and Conquer podcast. And this is just a link straight through to my Spotify. So whether I click on this for my playlist and listening to all of my music, which I love to do constantly throughout the day, or for quickly accessing podcasts and things as well, I thought this was a really essential one for me to have on this front page and definitely a really good feature of the widgets to be able to quickly jump into that as well. The last thing that I added is something that I'm always doing as well, and aren't we all, and that is Google, because I really wanted to be able to quickly Google absolutely anything, whether I'm having a debate with someone or I just really need to know something super quickly, I can just jump straight in and type it into Google and not even have to click on the website itself. So that was my final one that I added onto this page, and this is the first screen that I always see, which I just find super, super helpful. So I only have three screens because I absolutely hated scrolling through tons and tons of apps when I only really frequently access a handful of things. So I definitely got this a lot more organized recently and I really recommend if you have a little bit of downtime doing the same because it just makes your phone that much more organized and so much more user friendly and personalized to you. Because the way that the Apple or Android, even if you're using that, set it up initially is just the stock standard thing. And I have changed so, so much about this. So let me walk you through it. So first of all, I do have the maps app on here and I absolutely love that because I do have a car. So I'm constantly driving places. And even though I've lived in Melbourne for 10 years, I also grew up in Sydney and then moved to the Gold Coast. So I feel like I have a little bit of each location stored in my mind and I definitely don't know any place off by heart. So once I leave my little five kilometer comfort radius, I have no idea where I'm going. So I find it really handy to be able to quickly click onto that and access any of the locations that I'm looking for. And also if you're traveling as well, because you know that you can always do the walking option. So if I were to go up to Brisbane for the weekend, I could easily just tap into this and straight away be able to throw in a location and get going. Now, the next one right at the top is my Instagram because of course I do work part-time in social media. So it's really important for me to have quick access to that. So of course I always wanna jump into my Instagram to respond to any DMs, to be posting stories, to be adding new posts to my timeline. And of course, if you are not following me on Instagram, feel free to head over. I am really active on there as well. And I'm always adding new posts and new stories and reels and things like that as well. The next app that I have here is YouTube, which of course is for me and you guys, because I do love to watch a ton of other content creators on there as well as part of my every week. And I also love having quick access to it so I can check up on how my videos are doing. The next app down that I have is Spotify. I am the kind of person who cannot handle silence unless I really need to relax and I'm happy to sit in a quiet room. I always love to have something on, whether that be a podcast or some music. And I really do love listening to podcasts when I'm out for a walk. So having Spotify ultra accessible to me has been really important and an absolute lifesaver during lockdown. So I don't feel like I'm lonely because I have someone else who is talking to me. And the other reason I love it is for setting a mood. So so there are so many playlists that you can find on Spotify, like a dinner mood one or a romantic one, upbeat things, workout tracks. And I do also follow a bunch of other creators on there, like Erin Henry, who I watched a video and she had completely organized hers all into a bunch of different vibes, which I would love to do when I get some downtime because I just thought it looked like such a fun and organized way to use your Spotify. The next app I have here is Facebook Messenger. And I swear I don't have people's phone numbers anymore. Like sometimes I only have them on Facebook Messenger and I only realize that when we need to meet up in person and I have to call them. So that is one that I always have right up the top as well because I am constantly using that to communicate and particularly in groups of friends as well. I've got a couple of chats in there with my girlfriends and that's how we organize our catch ups as well. The next one down is YouTube Studio, which you guys would never have to worry about, but it's a great tool for me because it shows me all of my analytics and really the back end of YouTube where I can go in and upload a thumb, thumbnail and edit my videos and do all of that creator kind of stuff. 
And the next one across is Facebook. And I honestly don't really use Facebook that much anymore, but I feel like I have my family on there and some of my old school friends and things. So I don't see myself deleting it anytime soon, but I feel like it kind of had its day and it's not something that I use too much anymore. The next one across is Pinterest and I am Pinterest obsessed. I use Pinterest to do my most recent vision board, which I will leave the video link up here if you're interested in watching that video and creating one of your own. But I love Pinterest for setting all of my goals, whether it be personal style, home style, daily inspirational quotes, food ideas, so, so many things. And I've organized all of my Pinterest boards around all of these themes. So if you're ever looking for a bit of inspiration, you are welcome to follow me and take all of those pins on there because I spend so much time every single week jumping in and adding new pins to all of my boards. The next one that I have is Safari, of course, just for quickly searching things. Then I have the camera, which is really important as well for whenever you need to quickly snap a photo and you're out and about. So of course I wanted this on my main home screen. And next to that, I have my photos to quickly access the photos and albums and things like that. Then I have notes and I do have a widget of the notes on the following page because I definitely do access that a little bit more often than some other things as well, but I wanted to keep the quick link on this page. Then I have the Google app again for just looking up things really quickly, but that's secondary to having the widget on the front page. I've got the clock, which you don't really need terribly, but I definitely do use it all the time for the bedtime function of the app and if you've never used the bedtime function in the clock, it is a game changer. I love it so much because you can set this really calm, slow rising kind of sound instead of the really abrupt alarms that almost shake you awake. And I really do find it super handy for programming that in, checking how much I've been sleeping because it does link up with the health app and really just using some of the other features like dimming the screen and all sorts of things that you can do to make sure you're going to bed on time and getting the optimum amount of sleep. I also do use the timer constantly if I'm doing something random in the kitchen like poaching eggs and I need it to be on for three and a half minutes. I'll set the stopwatch or a timer and all of that happens within the clock. Next to this, I have the weather, self-explanatory. I've already got it back on the front page, but this one is more detailed because you can obviously go in and add a bunch of your different locations. So if I am traveling or going home or something, I will always add all of the locations that I'm heading off to in there so I can keep an eye on what the weather is doing. Next, I've got contacts, which of course is just all of our phone contacts. Then I have the Binance app because I do have a small cryptocurrency wallet. So I love to keep this on my front page because if you are in any way trading things, you would understand that it's really important to check this probably once per hour, if not more frequently, depending on your position in the market and how risky your trades are. So I really do love to have that there so that I can keep an eye on everything and see how it's going. Next to that, I have my battery percentage, which isn't terribly important, but it is if you are about to run off to a meeting or take a Zoom call, because I really do need to make sure that I am fully charged and not going to have my phone go flat right in the middle of an important phone conversation, because of course that would look really unprofessional. And that is something that definitely happens working from home, let me tell you, because I have my phone sitting on my desk and I've got a podcast on for hours and it just drains the battery like nothing else. Down the bottom, I do have a bunch of the other quick apps as well. So I've got messaging, which of course, to be able to quickly jump in and message anybody, I have the phone so I can quickly ring anybody. I've got FaceTime because I do use this to talk to my sister who lives in America. So we often FaceTime so I can see her and her little boy and her husband. And the last one here is the wallet because I hesitated using this for the longest time. And then I finally, finally converted over to using the wallet function and adding one of my cards in there. And it's just been so handy because there have definitely been a few times when I was caught out and forgot my wallet and I was still able to pay for something because I had set up Apple Pay. So I'm on that wagon now and I really, really enjoy it because like I said, if you're just popping out for a coffee, you don't have to take your wallet. You just need your keys and phone and you can head out the door. Now, my last page is where I really get everything all organized. So this is where I have my notes widget so that I can add in any notes. So at the moment it is showing the book that I'm reading, which is called Change Your Thinking to Change Your Life. And I am journaling on my phone from that book. And then I often go and add those notes into my actual journal later. So I 
I just find it really quick and easy to be able to type something in and then I'll go and write it later. And the reason I do that is first of all, I like to store the notes on my phone where I can access them all the time. And the other reason is I do really like to write things down twice because I feel like the knowledge absorbs a little bit better. So this is just another way to help me do that. Then I've got a couple of other things like the calculator, which is totally self-explanatory, settings, Notion, which I will go through in another video if you are interested in seeing how I use Notion to organize my life because it is so, so helpful as a tool for pretty much anything that you're organizing, whether it be a holiday, a function, or just your day-to-day -day tasks. And I really, really love this app. I also have Shazam for listening to songs because you know when you're sitting in a cafe and this amazing song comes on and you're just like, what is that? I always want to be able to quickly tap on this and find it out. So I really, really love this. And it also keeps your history in there from years and years, which is really funny to look back on and see like what songs were trending at the time. The next thing I've got is voice memos, because again, if I'm on the go, I definitely do use my phone as a little bit of a dictaphone and I will use this app to quickly record an idea and then listen back to it later on so that I can bring that into whatever I'm doing, because I don't always want to actually stop and type something out. The next app I have here is Outlook because I do need to access that on a daily basis for my work to be checking my emails and obviously sending off emails, replying to people, and also to quickly access my work calendar through Outlook. So that is how I jump into all of my Zoom meetings and Teams meetings and things as well. And next to that, the last one is WhatsApp. So I do, like I said, have some family overseas. So this is how we communicate to each other, but it is a little bit less frequent that I would use that to talk to people than any of my other messaging apps. So that's why it's on the last page because I do still have notifications turned on. So it's not like I'm gonna miss a message from someone and forget to reply. And then next to that is where the fun begins. So I have an entire folder full of productivity apps, which I won't go into now because there are too many in there, but basically this contains things like Google Drive, Dropbox, uh, it has the mailing thing, Gmail, all sorts of stuff like that. And this is mainly focused around my work and the more serious side of things. Then the next folder that I have is photo and video. So this is a ton of different photo and video editing apps. So I've got things like Canva, Screenpresso. I've got Lightroom, which I absolutely adore for editing video uh, photos, sorry. And I'll do an entire other video on how I edit my photos because I have had a few of you request that. And then following on, oh, in, that, in that as well, I do also have an app which shows me basically a preview of my Instagram feed. And I think that one is super helpful as well. The next folder is all fitness. So I've got my timers for fitness. I've got any of my fitness apps. I've got the booking app Mind Body, where I book all of my health and fitness classes through. And I also have the health app and my health insurance and things like that. The next one is some educational things, which I've got like Udemy and Kindle and stuff like that. I have the entertainment folder, which has things like Stan and Netflix and all of those apps that I like to use. Then the next one down is utilities, which is kind of boring stuff like where I book my cleaner through and my phone and internet bills and things like that. Then I have some food apps. So I've got HelloFresh, which is a subscription service. I have Deliveroo for deliveries and an alcohol delivery one, which was totally essential during lockdown. Then I have a bunch of shopping apps and things, which is like Depop, Afterpay. I have ASOS, Princess Polly, The Iconic. All of these kind of apps are all in that folder. So it's less tempting to me to click on them and shop because they're not on the main screen. But I definitely do like to have them because you often get specials and discount codes by using the app instead of the website. And the last one that I have here is travel. So this is all travel things like Uber, Diddy, it is uh, PTV, which is the public transport thing here in Victoria. I've got the tram tracker app and that's basically, oh, and Google Translate and other really useful things like an offline map called Maps Me, which I use when I'm traveling. But of course that's not really happening at the moment. So that's why I've put that folder last. And the final thing that I have on here is just another little widget, which is the sunrise and the sunset. And I thought this one was super cute. And it's something that I really, really love having in summer because sometimes after work, the sun goes down really late here in Melbourne. So you would be lucky enough if you time it right 
to be able to have enough time to get down to the beach. And I absolutely love that. So I popped this here because we are coming into summer and hopefully fingers crossed out of lockdown. So that's something that I'll really, really be looking forward to after my work day ends. So that is everything that I have on my iPhone. Thank you guys so much for watching. And like I said, if you are interested in some other productivity apps around how I use my phone or some of the other things that I do on there, like my photo editing, then let me know in the comments down below and I'll be sure to make those videos really soon for you guys. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.